So I'd like to call a uh, meeting uh, of the Huntington County Solid Waste Alliance together. Um, it's uh, the 4th of August, 407 p.m. We're going to start with a public hearing. Mark, turn your camera on. You know you're there. I'm here. I'm here. Right. So, um, the town of Bennington has a wastewater treatment facility that has to be, re you correct me if I'm wrong on this, it has to be recertified and also has to has a sludge management plan that turns out in our SWIFT, our solid waste implementation plan, any facility, um, oh, it's, it's been true before, any, any solid waste facility has to be listed in our plan before it can be certified by the state. So, for instance, if Sandy decided they wanted to build a transfer station, we could say no. I'm in a, I'm in a Zoom meeting. So we have a sort of a regional authority there. Now, it turns out that wastewater treatment facilities are also included in this. And those that require those that either a wastewater treatment facility or that have a sludge management plan need to be listed. And so what this amendment does is it lists the Bennington, the Manchester, Alma treatment plants, and all the next because they are the treatment plants that they first of all they're full treatment plants and they're also they also require So if you ever needed to do anything, you're already listed in the plan. So that's basically what the amendments do. Um, they um, make a modification to page 37. It's going to go to 37. I know you've all read this book. Go. There we are. There you go. It's a modification area. It just makes a distinction between solid waste facilities, such as transfer stations. That's only this change is what's in red. And we're down to the next page. I don't think this will be. Well, yeah. Yeah. No. Thanks. Okay. That's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so it just so it's okay. Those, those septic solid waste systems. The typical solid waste transfer stations, like transfer stations, we have criteria. Right. I didn't create any criteria for wastewater treatment plants because a, I don't know if we, I don't know if we want to get into that. And b, the BNR. AR already has yeah, those. Yeah. Yeah. So the basically it says is that if they if they need one of these things, if they have a solid sludge management plan, they're already considered included. Otherwise, if somebody built a new sewage treatment plant, they would have to come to us and we'd have to list those. So if uh, I don't know, we could do that. Arlington or Arlington, Arlington, if you guys wanted to build one in East Arlington, um, we would need to get that list. So basically this criteria would be up to the so you guys would be listed, the Manchester would be listed, the Arlington schools, again, the Arlington schools, it's just goes into a septic field, doesn't it? Yeah, but there's active conversations to expand that. Right. So they also have what's called a sludge management plan, which is a whole different thing. And not all community septic systems have a sludge management plan. They're not listed individually in here, though. Oh, yes, they are. So, one question for you: Did I miss anything? Anybody not included? Because we can make, we can make a change to this now. I want I want to do this with A and R quite in quite detail because we're trying to figure out if you if you go to their website and their the database and look for 
they square two and that's a lot of stuff comes up. But it's things like maybe that mold in them. Yeah, they have a private yeah. water, yeah. public they water. They don't they don't count so I think the only thing I I mean you tell me that I, I made the I listed the Arlington School as a Battenfield Supervisory Union because they're still in transition. So they don't okay? exist. I, I think we should amend that to as the Southern uh, Southwest Vermont Supervisory Union. Although I don't know why it wouldn't be the Arlington School. It's just listing the supervisory union as the I think they're the owner. Yeah. Then that would that would be and I don't know, actually. Actually, I, <laughs> um, supervisor units are supposed to be all over property. Yeah. The school district. They yeah. Yeah. Buses, they they can't own yeah. So it should be the Arlington School District. Yeah. I just know it because our supervisor union has to lease their property. They can own it. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that the Sandgate owns its bus because it's not a, you know, it's a, it's not a system. Can't own a bus. Yeah. Yeah, that's easy. So that's the proposed amendment. I did, did not get any comments from any public or anything I mean, like which I can conspired with our, our A and R because we were trying to figure out the wording that, that would work for them. How would you what would be the opposition to this? I'm trying to think that through. Well, I don't know. I put a okay. public notices in the papers, okay. and it was in the news guide, and we put it on, our, on the on the Solid Waste Alliance website. And sent it to you all of you, so I assume you all first page for them. But this is really coming into compliance with the requirements Basically, that already exist. Exactly. Right. So we're just papering it up, you yeah, know, right. running it. So yeah, but um, nobody told us that. Yeah, so you have careful to so say, read this, read this stuff. You know, it's like. Um, well, for the sake of getting it out there, I will make a motion to um, approve of the proposed amendment as amended. Yes. Uh, I was going to ask for a second. Oh, I apologize. No, no, that's all right. No, we can have that. Well, you can have discussion after you have that. Right. So, uh, is there a, uh, there's a proposal to accept this amendment as written with the objection of the changing the Patton Hill to uh, Arlington and the discussions from the public. Right. Okay, without uh, any discussion, uh, I have to vote. Everyone in favor of accepting this with that uh, one change? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. There's only a couple other things on the agenda. One is the approval of the minutes from last time. I think I directed you to the website, our website where they all work from and send them to you. So hopefully I don't answer them. <laughs> I'll make a motion to the Second. Hey, any discussion? Same as it. Okay. Uh, no further discussion on the paper except the amendment to the agreement. Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Carries. Okay. I'll do my first one. So, Stu. Did you get those asphalt signal agreements? I have I've seen them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you saw it, but didn't look. Okay, when you get a chance. I saw it. <laughs> when you get a chance, take a look at them. What I did, I made a change to include the amount that each town would maximum be half okay, but I haven't seen them. I didn't send you those well because I didn't hear about the first one. So I'll send you those and then if you want to send them out, you want me to send them. We'll talk about that. Okay. Household hazardous waste agreements I've already sent out, so I've gotten them from them. Stanford's going to do it tomorrow night. Uh, Glass and berries and Arlington, right? Yep. So you guys could get your household hazardous waste agreement signed and sent to me. That would be great. All right. Okay. Well, that's part one. I don't 
kind of chat me through. It's done in our next meeting, which is, should be Monday by the time we get there. And then this is stuff for our next meeting. So you want to talk about? Yeah. Uh, through my outreach, some of the things I've discovered uh, related to events is towns that have facilities that host public events, to the best of my knowledge, don't have much in the verbiage of their facility use permitting agreements with the public entities that want to rent or lease sites in the public domain that have um, provisions for sorting of both recycling and food scraps at the event. A lot of it is guaranteed waste hauling, but since the laws have kind of changed, especially last year to ban all food scraps from the trash, we need to update the provisions that people have within their permitting guidelines, agreements that are signed by the entities that use the facilities to include that, whether it be on born on the village or town to do it, or whether it's the entity that's leasing the spot to include that as part of the responsibility. And then just as we look at the actual events as they occur, um, we need to somehow have a discussion about how we can be consistent in setting up containers that are like in color and um, signage so that it's consistent. Part of the problem we have such high contamination rates in our best effort to recycle is I've gone to parks and I see blue cans for trash, green cans for recycling or trash, brown for this. I and mean, it's just, I'm not quite sure what the color scheming is all about, but it, it's nothing consistent. So you just, everyone sees a barrel, they're throwing everything into it because they can't find it. Likewise, the state does require that uh, all uh, collection bins for trash in common areas, whether they be office areas, municipal buildings or parks, have to have a recycling bin right alongside it. And I've been to some parks in the past week and I've seen a recycling bin and 15 trash bins scattered around the, the park. So it's great that the bins are out there to collect the trash, but it doesn't give anybody a choice to, it's, you know, 300 yards away and they've got a can or a bottle and they've got no place to put it. And they don't see the one recycling bin because it's the same color as all the other trash bins on the park. So. That's what we need to have a discussion about. I can bring some material, maybe from A and R, or some yeah. guidance about how the best, you know, best practices that might be easiest for municipalities to adopt. We thought we'd have a larger discussion at our next meeting. Okay. Yeah. Great. Just want to so I found that they had a, they had a uh, provision that says if you have a trash bin, you have to have a recycling bin next to it. That's right. That's what I just said. Yeah. yeah that we're not doing. So, that, so that's simple enough. You have a trash bin out there, you have to have recycling bin every right. side. Right, but in addition, the color coding is part of the problem that everyone's getting confused about sorting things. Because we have blue trash bins, blue recycling bins, green trash bins, brown recycling bins, and it's there, it's a bunch of that. Yeah, yeah, but that's not, I think she's right. I think that the symbol should be enough, but I don't think it is. Is there any kind of convention on this already elsewhere? Yeah, pretty yeah. much the state follows um, black for trash. Green for composting, blue for recycling. That's pretty consistent. We have signing for that, but more importantly, we also need to think about signing that's consistent throughout the whole area so that it isn't just some flimsy thing put up for an event and then gets torn down after the first rainstorm, but something that's going to be resilient through the seasons that people can see winter, spring, summer, fall. So it doesn't. You know. So we, we have, so, um, and, and you've been out to one of our events mm -hmm. that, that I was in. I was occupied during it. Uh, we have black, so when we go and buy them online for recycling, the companies offer us green and blue. Mm -hmm. We picked green at one point, so we have green, but we have black trash cans. Um, I think I'd be—I mean, I'd be open to a sort of a pilot program with the stadium, for example, at Applejack. We've done it at the park before. I will be honest with you; it's an absolute train wreck. Mm -hmm. We have two bins, and we have two bins of garbage. I think if we follow up that with a public awareness campaign mm -hmm. and getting that information out consistently that follows in line with the, what the state has, that's going to help increase our success rate too. And that's why I think if you if you identify, like, you know, for example, the state, we have probably at least 10 events there, two, 10 big events mm -hmm. um, this fall. Um, 
if we did that, we could sort of see like what worked and track it. And actually, I'd like to take a look at the trash cans afterwards and say, you know, what worked and what didn't. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, we can have a field trip. Yeah, but it's got food residue in it. So they're trying to be good, so they put it in their recycling bin and it's contaminated because it's got food in it because you're supposed to keep that stuff out. And so I think there's a lot of a lot of issues here. I mean, I think, you know, I mean, I almost feel as if people should have to take everything home with them. And do it it's all they just got rid of the trash can because it's too much trouble. That was actually raised to me when we had our discussion. Yeah. A select board, one, a member of the public came to me and said, we should, in, 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 light, in lieu of doing this, simply abolish trash at the park and and carry and carry out it's good. and and then make special provisions for the events um but only if, but event specific and, and but, one of the issues that we would have so we have people we sell quite a bit of concession food at events and the grandstand is covered so you can stand up there and eat your food trash cans are all uncovered if you did food composting in a, in a trash can that had some kind of Lapping, you have a terrible, you have a terrible mess. There'd be no way to get the composting food into the yeah, container. Yeah. But when it rains, then what you get is a soupy mess of French fries and burgers. A slurry. A slurry, yeah. Okay, everybody has to eat all their food. Yes. No food scraps. You gotta eat. No you buy food. it, you gotta eat it. And the There's containers are out as well. So, anyways, I, I'd be interested in doing that and seeing how it works because. And there's, there's probably a way to do it. I just haven't figured it out yet. As yeah. far as we have at Applejack, we do have separate bins. They're terribly labeled. They're, they're not labeled. They're not labeled. <laughs> yeah. They're green and black. Yeah. And I would always think people would figure it out. So, anyways, that's yeah. my. Well, our, our compost bin, uh, our transfer station, has the big, big unit that has the lid down. So yeah. They can. If you add something up. like that, you know, if we, we have an extra shed, so we just clean it up against it. People can, but they're supposed to close it after each week. I got, I got stickers right on top of every one of them. They can close it with a lot of people. Some people just, you know, I put their stuff in there. And, oh, yeah. And they're not the nicest thing, but the problem is they leave them open, especially this time of year. Flies are just unbelievable. If you had, I mean, if you had for the food scrap, if you had a, one of those big casella bins with a huge hood where you could really get your stuff in there, jump that's, it in. That's what we have. You have those. Okay. That's yeah. That's kind of like what, because they wouldn't be getting, anyways, there's, there's, a lot of logistical challenges to implementing the state's philosophical or uh, lofty goal <laughs> yeah, <after reasons, laughs> yeah. that when you are on site. Yeah, and I realize we can't necessarily do food composting or food scrap collection throughout the park, but they, the, the law does require that we have recycling bins right alongside each waste bin that is located yeah. anywhere in the common. I agree with food scraps. Yeah, but I think we should. Stadium, we put. Yeah, but every time there's a vent, we should be able the to have something have ready to go, yes. and, and not necessarily. Yeah, the hauler can provide some of that stuff, but we have to back it up with enough consistent signing and messaging so that people know it's the expectation is there. They need to do that. And we had some good. I mean, we had a we had a tournament that had 2,500 people at, it. and the organizers I think would do it if they had. If they had really good guidance yeah. and sort of a system, yeah, right. I mean, if the town could have the container and the system or something, mm -hmm. make it available to the people doing the event, but then they cover the cost of it in their fee mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 But, but, uh, I'll tell you one of the downfalls for having it just for the town, unless you, unless you do something like with uh, the seller of the can, you know, the yeah. difference. Those things, when you fill them up, they're 400 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. They have a truck. I mean, we have them in a the shed there, and they, they pull them out. We, we usually have two and a half, three, sometimes even four of them completely filled up wow. in a week. And they, they pull them out, and they have a the truck comes in, flips them up, bring them out, rinse them out, flip them up that again, but they don't rinse them out real well. And then he puts them back in the shed. They do that every Tuesday, of course. But that's at like your transfer station. Yeah, but I mean, walk. if you're talking about with 2,500 people, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you're going to need something like that, yeah. for sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah, hopefully yeah. <laughs> That's our yeah, we gotta do that. So we can, we can add that. I'm, I'm suggesting that we can get we're going to do our budget to this. So I'm thinking of early October meeting. That work for people. Or we want to suggest. Yeah. 
our first event is August 25th. So if you want to really try to do something to this fall and try to figure out like some trial and error type stuff, you'd have to get it. Okay. Yeah, let's uh, work out that meeting that we talked about here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Start that conversation. Yeah. 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 Recycling containers weren't going out the back of the Oh, that's what I thought. Yes. <laughs> they'll, they'll be in Arlington. Yeah, we yeah. can. <laughs> I'm carrying back. Yeah, <laughs> so, what do you think about October 6th as the first event? Can everybody write that down? Sounds good. Okay. Same back time, same back channel. Or here, that's time to me. Well, we could do a um, hybrid meeting unless something happens and we can go back to Zoom. Sounds good. What does it tell us do with the food screen? Do they have that kind of posting? Mm -hmm. Operation. Yeah. So, stuff from Sunday, we go down there. I think that. Yeah. It used to take some stuff to us. Yes, uh, public comment on uh, on anything at all? Hi. Yes. <laughs> uh, my name is uh, Miriam Kamagam. I'm the director of community development for Goodwill. So in Vermont, we have, um, I run the whole territory in uh, recycling and other programs that I run. Uh, one of them is Thrifty Rags. Um, so we have two stores, one in Bennington and one in Rutland. And I actually, um, the same thing that you guys have Alliance Berkshire County, which is in Massachusetts, they also have the same thing. You guys have what, 13 townships here? Too? Yes. Okay. They have 11. So out of 11, uh, goes to nine, eight or nine, they order rags from us. Because in the state of Massachusetts, um, uh, they have a partnership with the MassDEP, which is the Department of Environmental Protection. And whenever they write grants, they have to have some kind of a partnership with a nonprofit or any company that does recycling. So in order for them to get points through their grants to put it through, they buy their, um, their rags that they use it for everything and anything from us. And that counts as some of their application that they can put through. So I know, um, so we have a thrifty rags, which is actually, um, we used to have this for many, many years that we did it in bulk. Now we sell them at our stores. So we have the one pound bags and three pound bags, and we also have the five pound bags, which is much bigger. And we have it at our stores, but what's uh, really interesting is uh, we had to really educate the community in bringing their t-shirts and towels in any condition. And what I mean is people are not bringing uh, clothing with holes and rips and bleached, you know, because they're saying, well, I'm never going to buy that, right, so right. why would I even donate that? So what do they do? They buy a new t-shirt, they throw away those t-shirts. They buy a new towel, they throw away, and it goes to the landfill. So by creating this thrifty rags, uh, we have uh, rag cutters, and I employ a pool of people to do this every single day. So we are having community awareness of saying, as long as they're washed, I don't care what condition they are. They can have a hole, they can be ripped, they can be bleached, bring it in, and then we cut them and we sell them at our stores. We have some companies that, as I said, the townships, they come and order 100 pounds, 200 pounds, and we have 20 pound bags that we give it to them. Their truck comes in, in our Pittsburgh area, but in here, in this area, because our truck can bring everything here. Our truck can uh, bring all the you know, the bags here, if anybody from this area, the townships, they order them because they can pick it up uh, from, you don't have to come all the way to Massachusetts area to do that. So I'm wondering if there is such a thing that you guys have when you do grants that you have to somehow use, you know, um, something to be recycling and all of that, and if that adds to your points or something like that. But I know you guys are working on your website. So I want to, because we do e-cycle, uh, with the computers and TVs in our Bennington and Rutland. So we want to make sure that we are on your website from that part of it, plus the trip device that they can really 
the whole community can bring their t-shirts and towels and we can put a link. Yes, that, but I, I also want to know, I want to do awareness on the t-shirt and towels because textile is different than Right. Yeah, T-shirt and Facebook and Instagram, and, yeah, and then re reboost it out to other. Uh, so if you got something on your website that we can link to. That would be oh yeah, okay. So I I'm have sure your you information, know. but I don't have. You have mine. We well, inter I'm Paula Camper. Oh, okay, yes. <laughs> we've known each other and been on Zoom. <laughs> yeah, okay, so it's okay, no right. problem. So I just wanted to make sure that the townships are aware because I'm sure you guys are buying rags from somewhere, you know, uh, to clean up and do all. I don't know because the townships in Massachusetts they find it like there's no tomorrow. I don't know where the highway is going. Yeah, that's a good question. So we sell actually for $1.25 per pound. If you go to Home Depot, Abushan, Car Hardware, yeah. you can run it by oh a five pound bag can go close to fifteen to twenty dollars. So they really put prices on these. The price that I have, it cost me just to pay somebody to just cut it and the, the plastic bag and the flyer. That's it. There's absolutely no profit into this. I just want to make sure people are aware that it's not going to the landfill. Bring it to us as long as they're washed and then do that. Also, I'm also looking into have metal containers at different parts of this territory that we have because it will have the Goodwill logo, we'll have it really spelled out that they can bring like, you know, wash, t-shirts, towels, textile, or whatever. So that's something that we're working on because I'm not sure about Vermont, but in the state of Massachusetts, we have to reduce, throwing away all these textiles, food, construction, all of that stuff into the landfill by year 2030. In a matter of 30%, we have to reduce it. In 2050, we got to go 90%. So that be, well, they're, they are doing it right now. They're working on it. And they are trying to say, we're talking about 2050. God, I hope we're all alive for that. But, um, but they are looking into different ways of getting everybody involved. Like, for example, the town I live in, Williamstown, we are, they have voted on the town to do the food through Casella. So we are separating our food from our, and that is the project that they are going to start. And that's the first town in Berkshire County that they want to go for it. Are they offering curbside pickup, I wonder? Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. so there would be a charge or something. So my daughter went to the bears. The bears in Williamstown. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, they, so well, they have to do something. I mean, how, how are we going to pick it up from? So they're going to get the businesses and the households involved in that. We can do is we can get the information you talk about. Yeah. All over on Facebook. Okay. We yeah. have a regular, we put things out on the front porch corner, so we can certainly put some text off things there. Perfect. And we have a newsletter that we publish four times a year. We also put that in the news guide. Yeah. Which gets a lot of play yeah. 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 on our yeah. website. So we can put these uh, containers out and you know, pick the stuff up. So write us a blur. We will pick that. What, what did you say? I'm sorry. If you have one of your standby transfers, yeah. we have one of your containers. We have them for the tax yeah. right. good clothing on students and so forth. You can't pick the stuff up. Oh, yeah, we have to. Okay. Yeah, the truck yeah. has to do that. So I'm in the process of saying how to do that. Do you have containers? I thought you didn't have containers. We don't have containers, but we're going to because, as I said, we have more of our stores are in Massachusetts, and we have to think about getting more donations. Okay, but, I think, but I think there's another thing, and I don't want to, you know, step on what you're doing with the right, sure. which I think is great. But you know, I already do that. I mean, if I have a sheet that wears out, I wash it. It's, it's full of holes. I rip it up, and it's rags. I mean, people can do this with their own. I wish stuff. everybody was I like know. you. I know, I know. <laughs> but I mean, but I mean, that's not a, that's not a bad message to get out to people that. When you have clothing that's worn out, that's no longer, first of all, you can give it to goodwill, but second of all, you can just rip it up and turn it into rags. And, yeah. and if you don't want to be washing them, you use them once like a paper towel, and then, you know, I mean, I don't know. But a lot of people don't do that. Some of them I do. Sometimes they just kind of give up the ghost. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my clothing has a hierarchy, you know, it's good, and then it's, it's working, and then, you know. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I,
I wish everybody was like you, but it's not. It no, I mean, it's not. Mean, you know, they don't. They, you know, he said, "What, what was that thing?" There was some kind of saying, um, "Fix it up, wear it out, make it do, yeah. move it out." You know, and that it was that was Vermont. You know, my grandfather had boxes of keys that no longer had locks. He had boxes of tiny pieces of string. You know, we had all this kind of stuff, and we just gotta try to get some of that. Back. And a lot of people really do not think. That t-shirts is it's a red. Staff. It's a red. But at the same time, you have to grow cotton to create right. a t-shirt. Right. Right. And one t-shirt requires not the energy part, just right. the water part. It's 555. Yeah. You know, we have the money gallons of water which will feed you for 990 days. That's over two days. years of your drinking water. You know, one t-shirt. In my grandfather's house, we didn't have gloves. They used to have a thing back in the 40s where you would take your rag right. to this factory and they would make them into rugs and then you have the rug. Yeah. You know, so but a lot of people them. don't don't think that way, and I wish. And we have to just kind of change that. That's why we have this whole 59 saying, don't throw it away because when you throw it away, it goes to the landfill. But I think that's a really good point about the cotton and yeah. what it takes to make Absolutely. Cotton. Yeah. I use a lot of paper towels, but I have no guilt because I get a lot of use out of paper towel. It's always slightly used. You put it out there. Yeah. 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 I know that. Oh, yeah. I, I, I have my lettuce those two sheets. Now it's like the counter, and it's still not that bad. I think when the floor is nice, I can let it go in the tray. So I, I have no guilt. Yeah. I'm going to use what I use for everything. Do you sell those rags to um, businesses also? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so they, as I said, the townships, with the townships, we don't charge them tax because they are, you know, uh, mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, but the, I mean, I have a company, Maximilian, in Pittsfield, yeah, that, that they order, they order 500 pounds at a time. So I bail that uh, because I don't put them in the trash bags, you know, to give them sure. 20, 20, 20. So I do a whole bailing and then they bring their truck and we put it on their truck. So, oh yeah, it is a huge, because if you have to get it from Home Depot or Abushan like that, you'll go, you go, right? I mean, you go broke. Yeah. yeah. All right. No, maximum is not, but at least they're using our, you know, t-shirts. Yeah, <laughs> keeping it all the way Absolutely, yeah. Well, eventually you're gonna find a way to also takes out if people have ketchup, if the zipper is broken, you don't have a button or whatever, they throw it away. Don't do that. Wash it, bring it to Goodwill because we bail them out to overseas. Yeah, it doesn't go to the map. Yeah. I just posted something well over the last 24 hours about putting your textiles, put all the listings, the yeah. all the listings, including all the goodwill yeah. options here. And then, uh, yeah. So we'll we'll uh, talk more about yeah. that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No. Are they online? Nope. Anything else? Any other business? All right. Do I have a second? Second. Hey, all in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 All right. Where are you, Michael? I'm sorry. I'm bad. 40 minutes. Just exactly.